why the heck are you talking about Kruskal's algorithm? This is a big data class. Um, this, that's a routine standard undergraduate uh, algorithm for, for minimum spanning tree. Yeah, good to know. Well, it is good to know that. Um, but you know, we t I talk about Prim's algorithm real briefly. And by the way, Prim's algorithm to me feels a little bit like Dijkstra's shortest path algorithm. Um, it's modified. It doesn't worry about total length, but it just sort of add the next you know, shortest edge to a new area. Um, Kruskal's algorithm uh, feels like a, sorry, yeah, Kruskal's algorithm, algorithm feels like a clustering algorithm, a tree clustering algorithm, okay? Uh, as you're growing, you're growing different, these different trees of the forest, you have a whole forest of trees. Each tree is made up of nodes that are all close to each other. They're all a cluster, okay? So if you want to have a clustering algorithm, here's one for you to decide how many clusters you want, and when you get that many, when you're down to that many trees, freeze Kruskal's algorithm and say, here, here are my clusters. So yeah, that's kind of cool. We get that for free. Um, now, I'm not saying this is the only way to do it. Uh, in fact, it's not certainly the only notion of cluster. And certainly one drawback of, of this is it says you're part of a cluster if you're close to any one node in a cluster, then you become part of it. And if something now is just close to any one node, that they become part of that cluster. Um, so as opposed to something like, hey, I have clusters, and you're close to a cluster if you're close to its existing center of mass or something like that. So yeah, there's ways. And you can think about modifying uh, Kruskal's algorithm to do, maybe try to take that into account, try to keep it efficient still. You don't have to go and reprocess all your edges when you say, hey, this whole set of nodes is as if it were at a center of mass. But, okay. Um, of course, the big drawback about Kruskal's algorithm is this, this n squared behavior, which for really big data is not uh, good, unless our graph is sparse. Good research topic. Go off and find how people um, can still use this approach, but they have ways of pruning a lot of the edges, of only comparing uh, edges that are already close to each other. So uh, in 3D geometry, this is a well-known problem. You have a whole bunch of objects in your video game, and you only want to check for collisions between nearby uh, objects. And they have octatrees as a standard algorithm for, for that. That's great, but that's for three dimensions. If you have 100 dimensions, it's not so straightforward. Um, so yeah, if you want to go out and research how people do this, and maybe come up with ideas of your own, that would be an awesome research project. Come back and tell me about it. So, um, we are going to look at k-means clustering, a different uh, clustering algorithm next week. Um, and it, it's a very different way of doing it and doesn't suffer from this. Uh, this, by the way, will also, uh, next time I'll draw, when, I have a, when I'm with you in person, you can draw on the board, I'll draw a um, dendigram. You can look up in Wikipedia, dendigram, and you can sort of see how that can go with clustering and Kruskal's algorithm. And finally, I'll just sort of mention that you know, we can't do clustering if you don't have a notion of distance between two points. That's still, that's, that's needed before we can even do clustering at all. Which is why we talked earlier about high dimensions and different metrics and different ideas for how you might choose to define a distance for your particular data. I didn't give you an answer. It's still an art. Here's my data set. How do I come up with a good notion of distance that's going to correspond to something that might give good answers? So, and again, going back to the previous example, your Netflix, and you have these movies, and for every movie you have 100 booleans. Um, yeah, okay, do clustering on that, and what sort of metric might you use? Yeah, and maybe, you know, here's the cool part. <laughs> it actually gives kind of useful clusters. Um, yeah, at least I'm amazed by that. But I'm old and easily amazed, so let's go ahead and stop talking.